All right. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming to our all class meeting. And we are, hang on, we need to have, somebody needs to mute. Um, there we go. Thank you. So we're going to talk about our uh, data layer. So we're going to look at our table, um, our tables diagram, and we're going to helpfully get all on the same page. We're also going to kind of go over that PowerPoint uh, that I posted in the announcements channel, make sure we're all like having the same assumptions. Please speak up, please ask questions, um, and let's make sure that we agree and yeah, are all thinking the same things. So is everybody good with that? Cool, okay. So I'm gonna share my screen. And uh, so I won't be able to see people. Uh, oh, a little bit and Let's come over here. So we're just gonna start with, um, you know, some of these assumptions that we're making is that the user, whoa, uh, maybe we can even go in present mode here. Or maybe not, there we go. Is that the user does not make, does not alter any data of an assignment that's synced from the LMS. So, is that clear for everybody? Like no, nobody's gonna be changing, you know, like the, the due date or the assignment content of something that was synced from the LMS because that would create a mess with all the syncing, right? And what gets overwritten. So is that clear? Thumbs up, okay. No. All right, the task we decided must be associated to a course. So it doesn't have to be associated to an assignment, but it does need to be associated to a course. That way a task can have a color and not get crazy. Like it helps keep things, the data clean and organized. So that good? Okay. Whoops. Uh, these are the things that are user created. So task, assignment, and note. And whoops, I'm sorry. Ah. These are the things, and I have this little bar covering up everything. These are the things that a user can update. So they can update their completion status, which is like the checkbox. They can update the color of the course. Um, the color of the course is not required, by the way. And then they can update any content they created. So they can update a task, a manual assignment, and notes. But they can't update like LMS. So are we good with that? Okay. Ah, okay. Um, and then we've got tables. We're actually going to go over that in a second. I'm going to skip this slide. And we're going to actually skip some of these others. But um, let's, let's, let's do skip this for now. And hang on, let me get out of this. And we're going to go over to our diagram. And I have all kinds of dialog boxes on my computer right now because I'm sharing my screen. So forgive me if I go to the wrong thing. Here we go. Okay. Maybe it's better to get the image up here. One second. Okay. Can we all see this? Okay. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tables is what we think that we can handle um, uh, this all hack with. So um, one of the things we, we have a user table. Let's just go through them and please stop me. A, if I'm boring you to death and B, if you have questions. So um, our user table is what we're going to, we're not going to try to handle all the user profile because that's going to be handled like when they log in, right, to um, iLearn. But we do need to have their user ID and we need to know what courses they're signed up for. So um, a user can be signed up for multiple courses or no courses <laughs> at, the, at the moment or the courses may change throughout the semester. So um, we're thinking that we're going to have this course ID, which would be something akin to JSON uh, data so that you could have multiple <laughs> course IDs in one field. Um, we've toyed around with like maybe making it its own table, but we've kind of come back around to 
I think this will work. So that way you can use the user ID and you can look up any courses that they have assigned to them and find and then associate any assignment IDs with that. So this is kind of a pivotal po point is anybody have thoughts or questions about this? Mm -hmm. If someone's talking, I can't hear you. Corey, you, you're talking, but you're not, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah? Yes, we can no. hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Speak. Now we can't hear you. No. If you put your lips up, we can maybe lip read. We're just seeing nose up. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, we can't hear you. Are you good? Do you just do you want to type it and we can read it? Type it in the chat. Okay. All right. Well, while he's doing that, any other questions about this course with the associated with the user ID? Okay. Corey, once you type or whatever, we can come back to it. Um, and then just signal to me. <laughs> Okay. Sounds good. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, are we worried about normalization on this, or are we going to let the database administrator take care of that? What do you mean by normalization? So when you're building a database, there's like several layers of, um, of rules that you have to check the database against. And so I'm just curious if we need to start doing that right now, or if Brother Wild, it's okay if we say, hey, we'll just let the database administrator reorganize this when we get done with the data model. I'm still not sure that I follow you. Hopefully, we're following the rules that need to be used for the database. I'll, I'll look them up and I'll put a link in as soon okay. as I've got. Yeah, because I don't remember. I took that class a long time ago. I don't remember it anymore. The database <laughs> design and development? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if we took the same one, but I took it last semester. Okay. So I hope I, I mean, I got a good grade. I hope I remember, <laughs> but. Well, I would, I would, I would trust, I would trust that at this stage, you'd probably know more about this than I do anyway. So. Well, be careful on trusting me. We've already learned that. <laughs> so, um, okay. So let's, any, if we have any more questions about user speak up, but we're going to run with this idea. Um, so then we have um, our user ID is going to get associated with a number of things. But the, the next thing I want to jump to is our assignments, because that is really like the heart of what happens here. So um, and we have an interesting dynamic because we are allowing um, <laughs> users to create their own assignments. So which means that we have assignments that are synced from the LMS and we have assignments that are manually created. Um, but the, they're, <coughs> somebody's coughing. <laughs> um, we have a um, problem with that because we need a single assignment ID to be able to be associated with like a, the status, like if it's completed, et cetera. And we can't change what's in the LMS. So we can't just take the LMS ID and the manually created ID and you know we just kind of have the, these two entities that we need to somehow make them look like one thing associated with a user and a course. So that's why we have this assignment table. And all it's simply going to do is hold the user IDs, like give everything a unified user ID. So if it's the, an assignment from the LMS or assignment for that's manually created, we are going to have some a, a sync that's going to put it in this assignment table. Um, and then we've got like an origin ID that lets us know where it came from so that it would say like, this is from the LMS or this has been manually created. Um, there's some interesting dynamics that happen with this, but I think this is gonna be like the most straightforward way to go. Um, the, any questions about that so far? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so 
the origin ID, are we just talking about like numbering it like one means it's a manual assignment, two means it's like LMS or, or is it going to pull in the original? So like, it's actually a foreign key. So it's coming from the primary key of the actual like LMS. Okay, good. That's yeah. yeah. I just hadn't followed the line far yeah. enough yet. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I was just going to say, cause if, there's lots of lines. Um, my concern was just, you know, duplicate assignments and stuff if we're not tracking it back to that original, but if we've got the, that we're good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the one concern that I have here is like, there's some like ambiguity about like how we actually get this, right? Like, so at some point we have to have a sync that comes in for the assignment LM, LMS that says this assignment has this, you know, ID and it's associated with this user in this course. And there's some different ways we could do it, but just running with the, this gives us some parallelism so that the manually created assignment also has an ID, a user ID, a course ID, and that way the LMS also has those same three things. Um, but we have to sync that in some way and it also does create like some extra data in the system because now every assignment is actually associated with the user rather than just the assignment being its own thing that we just read. I mean, we are reading it, but like, we'll just read the data from it. We're not gonna sync every piece of data from the thing that's in the LMS. We're just going to say, this assignment ID belongs to this user. So um, I feel like this is also a really pivotal point. So I just wanna throw out there, like, what questions do you have? Does this make sense? <laughs> what does not make sense? How about that? What are how you fuzzy on? How are you making sure that the origin ID doesn't get duplicated between its two sources? Right? It's coming from assignment manual and assignment LMS. Is that what I read? Mm hmm Yeah, so so how are you gonna make sure that the ID isn't one on assignment LMS and one on assignment man? Well, let me ask this, does that matter? Because it's getting, we're not using that origin ID anywhere. It is, um, we're only using the assignment ID that is actually created as the primary key in this table. And that's why we created this table. But we could add like a suffix on it, it or something. It would matter, wouldn't it? If you, if you do a lookup, so assignment ID one, you do, get one yeah. and you're expecting one result, two results, which one do you pick? No, the assignment ID will always be unique. That's the primary key. We actually don't use this origin ID. If you don't use the origin ID, how are you gonna link it back to the assignment LMS or assignment man? So it is the assignment man and the assignment LMS that gets inserted here in the origin ID, but we don't use this anywhere else. We don't use this to look up or link to anything. It's actually technically not a foreign key. I should change that. Does that make sense? It's not a foreign key that resolves the problem, but I'm missing why it's not a foreign key. What, what is it then? It's simply a tracking, like that just says where it came from. So like, um, and it's just but, a, a yeah, one, two, it, three. yeah, and it okay. it might even be a varchar depending on what the LMS is <laughs> has as their ID. I think you said something, but I didn't hear you. If you remove the foreign key, then it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and I appreciate like being challenged on that. Like does, so if it's not a foreign key and we're not using it anywhere, that's solid, right? Like I, I technically think we don't even need it in many ways, but I think it's good to have it. Well, we do need it. We need something. Yeah, we do need it. We need it to uh, update and sync with the LMS, right? Otherwise, we might pull in like duplicate assignments and stuff if we can't compare the assignments on LMS to the 
the IEDs, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm reading, if we have, if we want to read, we're going to look up the assignment LMS based on the assignment ID and the origin ID. So those two things make a unique key, right? Is that, is that sound? Or no? I mean, there's no other way to give it a unique ID. I don't see right. another way to do it other than what we're doing. Oh, I, I was just, somebody asked why do we even need it? And that was my response. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so we do. We're, we're good. Yeah, we yeah. do, yeah, that's, yeah, that was my point. Yeah, okay, thanks, thanks for the, <laughs> um, I just wanna make sure though that thinking is sound, that having, if we wind up with a duplicate that it is okay, because the two combined, make it unique because the primary key is unique. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. It'll okay. never be duplicate because it's not a foreign key. That's, right. That just needs to be changed. Okay, cool. Thank you. We will change that. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, next thing, let's go to um, a task. It's actually fairly simple. So the task has a task ID. It's going to be linked to a user and an assign. Oh, whoops, I didn't draw my line here for the assignment ID, but that will get linked uh, to the assignment ID and it will have a title, a due date, and content. Fairly simple. Um, and, and this is what also allows the tasks, the, this, this assignment table um, allows tasks to be associated with an assignment, whether it comes from the LMS or manually assigned. So that's also a benefit of that assignment table. Um, kind of the, same thing with this. Uh, assignment type is only associated with the manual assignment. It's not associated with the LMS assignment because that's that data comes in from the LMS. Um, and then priority is only associated with status and note actually, yeah, is actually gonna, ooh. Should note go on assignment or status? I would think you'd want it on assignment, but. I think so too. I think I didn't catch that when I made this change, so. Um, Okay, so are we good with that? We'll change note to assignment ID. Okay, yeah. to the assignment, I'll change that. Okay, um, so then status then is really our last thing that um, is kind of at the heart of, of this because, you know, we said this is like the main thing that the user changes is being able to check it off to say like it's complete. Um, and I just had a thought and can, I don't know if someone can look this up in the SRS, but did we have something that this would be marked complete based on a sync for turning in the assignment? Or is everything marked manually? We need to look that up. Do you know what I mean? I'm, Wait, what was that? I'm pulling up the SRS right now. Okay, thanks. I feel yeah. like we had a requirement that said, if you turned in the assignment, in whatever LMS that it would show as complete here in hack, even if you didn't manually check it off. I believe, I believe we had something noted kind of similar to um, what the school is using now, where when you complete the assignment, it automatically will upload that it's okay. completed. Okay, so I don't have that concept built in, but maybe it's still here enough because maybe we can just have a sync that updates this status. Like it, maybe it's just fine. Um, so, so the status here is that um, every assignment will get a status ID 
um, it, which will be associated with a user, a priority. The priority is not, is not, not null. <laughs> Can I use a double negative? Um, because the, uh, it's optional. Like a, a user does not have to assign a priority to an assignment. They can, but they don't have to. Um, but it still would be a foreign key. Um, and then the step. Go ahead. Um, and the SRS under complete completed assignments under product functions. So I'm looking at 1.3.2.6.2. All assignments shall be automatically marked as complete after the assignment submission in iLearn. Okay. So. I think that we're okay data layer wise, but we need to make sure that we add that into like our controller. Does that sound good? Do we have the control? I mean, is this one of those things you have to assume the API will let us do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, the data's there, the, the yeah. action's there, so. Go ahead. I'm not, I'm not seeing anything in the SRS that says that it will when you turn in the assignment, it will be marked as checked off. Well, that's what Heather just read. That it said it would be marked as complete. Where, where did you see that, Heather? What was Sorry, I just realized I was muted again. 1, 3, I feel like that could be a song that's so long. <laughs> <laughs> One, three, two, six, two. Um, okay, so we will get to that next. This is a good thing for us to realize okay. and remember. So, um, but I, I th do we agree that I think this is okay data layer wise because we have a place to hold this. Nobody, okay, nobody's okay. saying no. I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. Um, so basically this status thing is really all it's holding is a Boolean value of like, it's done or it's not. Um, but it's associated with like everything here. So, because this is what we will use to display a whole bunch of things is this status table. Um, and so this status table can pretty much, based on the foreign keys here, it should be able to pull in almost, like all the data that we need to be able to make displays. So, any question there? Okay, I'm gonna move on to models and controllers and like how we're, we need to lay out this STD if we're good on the data, on the tables. I'm good. Okay. I'm yeah. Good. Okay. Great. So let's come back to this right here. So in the SDD, um, there's actually a very simple way to think of it organizationally. The first part of it is going to be that ERD that we have with our data layer. And it's going to list out all the tables and all the, you know, kind of like table names and not null and all that kind of information. Um, and that's gonna be that big section, our data layer. After that, it's going to be our views and we're going to um, uh, build our models and controllers. So this is where we're going to have things that are going to be like our functions. Um, and we've identified a few views that we have. Now, let's not confuse view with HTML because that's not what this is. This is, um, and I'm just gonna go back to my analogy of the waiter in the restaurant because this is the only way I can grasp MVC architecture. <laughs> um, the, the, view, the view is actually like the restaurant when you're sitting down to eat and the controller is your waiter that's taking your order back to the kitchen and bringing it to you. So we have nothing to do with the restaurant and how it looks, but we do have everything to do with the waiter. And that controller so and who's going to take you know that information and sorry if i'm beating that into the ground but it helps me so this controller like in the list view is going to read data based on what the user does um so like if they you know check the status that says this is complete the controller is going to read that it's going to tell the model part to go and put that into the database and then it's going to 
the controller for like the list view is also going to read that information from yeah. the database and say this is complete and then display that to the user. So that's where those functions would go. I heard someone starting to talk. Did you have a question? Or a thought? Oh no, I was just saying, yeah, that makes sense. That's it's oh. like a, another it's just a way to see look at the architecture of the system. Okay, good. Cool. Like how the data passed around. Cool. Cool. So so same thing with the calendar view. So hopefully that kind of helps to be like um, just to understand what that controller is doing. So you know, it's it's holding variable variables and is communicating with a model who's going to put who's actually going to write the function to put it in the database and such. Um, I mean, the controller will may have some functions as well, but they'll be different. They'll be based on like getting data you know, from the view and such, pushing it to the model. Um, so then we also have the calendar view, the details view, and in the details view, you can create um, assignments and tasks and notes. So you can create those things and you can update them in the details view. Um, and then we have what we're just calling a creation view because you've got to be able to, oh, sorry, the details view, you just create and update the notes. But in a creation view, <laughs> I feel like this is like, and on the first day, <laughs> we have the creation. <laughs> so, um, but that's where we can create um, and update tasks and assignments. So the details view has the notes and then our creation view, which we don't have like um, identified like in the SRS, but it's something functional that needs to be there is where we can create and update tasks and assignments. So those are four views. What we will likely do is assign each team a view to be able to write like the models and controllers that go with those views. So, questions about that? I'm I'm curious where would where would you put the delineating line between functions you'd put inside a controller and functions you put in a uh, in the model? Because mm -hmm. it, it, that's kind of subjective. That could be just depending on however our philosophy is. Right. So this is what I wrote down to help define it, and we could you know change it, but. The model is going to get the user action data from the controller and then it's going to do stuff in the database. It's also going to pull things from the database and send it to the controller. Um, it's mainly handling transactions at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. The controllers are going to get the user's actions, send it to the model, also direct those things to the correct model, um, and then get data from the model and display to the user. Now again, display doesn't mean it's going to create the display. It's just going to give the information that can be displayed. So I don't know if that helps. That does. That does. I mean, not that you would need to, but if, if there ever pops up any point where we're like, oh, we, we're going to have to do a calculation here or, or some kind of uh, changing of data, that would happen in the controller, though. Um, well, would let's you, let's talk um, about it. For instance, the count. I don't know. If Case would even, Pardon me? I was going to say, I don't know if that's even a case that pops up in our, our, we, uh, our actual thing, but. Uh, we have a couple, right? So the countdown to the due date and also yeah. like the summary. Those aren't things that are like stored in the database. Those are going to create it, be created dynamically. Right. Um, and so um, I would think that let's just say the summary, uh, the data that needs to be read for the summary would happen in the model. Like it's gonna do the select statement and pull out that data and put it into like a variable, a session variable or something. Um, and then the controller would take that data and say, okay, now subtract that from today's date and display. Okay, great, That's, that was my question, thank you. Okay, cool, yep. <laughs> I totally mixed that up. <laughs> I was like the summary and then the, the countdown's gonna subtract, but I think we got the idea. <laughs> Um, okay, so then we also have, um, now that we just kind of covered, like we're going to have these controllers. So these are models controllers. We're also going to have another controller, which we're just going to call like the engine kind of controller. And it's going to handle the syncs from the LMS and stuff like that. So, um, you know, 
that's like our fifth our fifth team <laughs> um maybe one of these other controllers is going to be easier to do um but can we, for can we hire a consultant for that yes yes definitely i mean we definitely need to like work on our management skills and <laughs> and get some more people to sub out some work here um but this engine if we can call it something else but is going to sync and update the database and it's going to update the user table which is going to include the course id and it's going to update that completion table and one of the things that we talked about in our leads meeting about this was that we're going to say it's going to happen every 10 minutes we're just going to keep that simple across the board because there may be some users that never log in we talked about maybe doing it on login but if no if somebody's like never logs in because they're like it syncs with my google calendar I don't need to, to log in then then you know if they drop a course or something we want to make sure that those like come off their account their profile um so that's why we're just going to have a sync every 10 minutes so any questions about that okay Cool. Well, that kind of wraps up what we need to do. I just, you know, does everybody have a clear idea? I kind of want somebody to like, tell me what I said. <laughs> like, did it make sense? So, okay. Could you repeat the whole thing? <laughs> sure. It only <laughs> take like two seconds. <laughs> so, um, and actually it's kind of worth like data layer. Mo and then the model controller functions, which we're going to like divide out by views in each section of the STD. That's how the other one, we have a sample STD that's like 122 pages. Ours is not going to be that long, um, but it seems like there's just a nice pattern. Here's a diagram. Here's the data. Here's a view that has some other, you know, like he said, data flows or sequence diagrams or whatever. And then here's like functions that go in it. So I feel like we're getting our heads wrapped around it. So to stop sharing yep. now. So how are we going to divide the work up between us going forward this week? Or is that a question I should ask later? I mean, we can ask it now. So um, this week he wants the format and all the data done. And then we can have placeholders for the other things. So, um, you know, my question is like, do we want to have just one team take the data layer? And because it's kind of, we've kind of built it out. So it's just more putting it in the format. That's point. Yeah. You know, um, or I could take that part and then each team could take one of the other views and kind um, of get those in a placeholder. I think, um, let's see, Jay, Carlos, most of my team is here. I've got one person who couldn't make it. Um, I think we can do um, the data layer. I've got all the outline stuff on my side anyway. Okay. Um, and I think that'd be something that, even though there's lots of little things in there, I think that would be something that, uh, you know, I've got a strong team and I've got, you know, the outline anyway. So I think that'd be pretty easy, if, like, you know, they would have good flow for my team to do that. So okay. Jay and Carlos, are you both good with that since you're right here? No pressure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no pressure. Um, Carlos, sometimes. Thumbs way up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm comfortable right. taking that then. Yeah, that's fine okay. with me. Cool. Okay. I just want to know, Heather, when I start saying I'm going to do something in the document, does that give you anxiety? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I have the outline on this computer like that nobody else can touch and I can make sure everything's lined up and, <laughs> and so not as much then. But like if we were sharing a document, like I'm going to go change stuff, probably be sweating a little bit. <laughs> so now I know how to get all my work done. I'm just going to be like, I'll just go make that change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great.
girl, you need to trust me. Just kidding. Actually, we've already established that. You You're just a said earlier not to trust <laughs> I know, you. Exactly. That's not fair. You have good judgment. I, I trust you. All right. Uh, so, um, okay. So we, then we have five more views. Um, do we want to tackle those? Do we want to have a couple teams who are willing to take a couple of those? Um, at least get some placeholders for them? Or what would you like to do? They don't have to be fully fleshed out this week. I would think that my team could probably do two. Okay. What do you think, Michelle? Do you think we can do it? Absolutely. There we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> That's the voice. The... Jonathan, if you're talking to us, we can't hear you. We still um, can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, yay. <laughs> now we can't hear you. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'll chat. Oh, there oh. we go. You're in and out. Get really close. Anyway, can you hear me? Yeah. You can assign us either of them. I'm happy to take the engine. OK. Um, Do you think there's a lot to that engine one? I don't know. OK. OK. That's, I think, feel like that's the most ambiguous one. Mm -hmm. And so it probably deserves a lot of attention. Yeah. And I think it, I think Jonathan, you created like the idea of it too. You were like, we need this one. So I think that's good for you to take. Um, Timothy, you just became visible. Did you want to share? <laughs> oh, and we have another visible person. You must speak up now. <laughs> I was talking the entire time. I was the one coughing every now and again. <laughs> Oh, sorry. And see, if we can't see your face, we don't know you're not talking. I mean, you know, we don't know you're muted. <laughs> sorry. I, I, uh, I'm on the East Coast, and I'm kind of like, I didn't want to get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on East Coast. So I'm very strategically placing this a, a bit higher. Okay, thanks, Edward. We're glad to know. <laughs> I think we need to stop the recording now. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to do it's some post production. Right, I know. <laughs> I mean, for some people, they're so gonna have to wear pants and things, you know. I know, I know. Actually, <laughs> I work. My company works remote, and the book that they gave us <laughs> is a year without pants. <laughs> <laughs> I took online courses, so I didn't have to wear clothes. So I just... <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Okay, so a couple more. So we've got engine taken care of. We've got data layer. Now we've got list view, can, calendar, de details, and creation. So we've got two more. Okay, well, actually, sorry. Corey, what, which two do you guys want to take? Oh, I don't have any particular preferences. I don't know if Michelle does, but you could just give us whatever ones you want to. That's a that's the easy way out for me. Okay. <laughs> um, How about list and details? That way you also have one that has some like create and update stuff. Okay, list and details sounds good. That's sounds good. good. Yeah. Okay. And then um, so that leaves two more. No, Cameron. Yes. Uh, what's your team up for? Um, too, too many. I don't I don't have a preference. Um, I think everyone but one of my of our teammates is here. Um, honestly, right. you can give us whatever you want. What do you guys say? You up for the last two for calendar and uh, creation? Wait, do we have a choice? If yeah. it's the last two or the last group. <laughs> <laughs> calendar, you can, you can say we can't do that. You can totally say that and say, no, we can only do one. Jonathan's team can do the other one. Just kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but seriously, we don't have to have them all do this week. So if you guys want to, like, 
scope them out and say, yes, like this is doable. We did these things. That's great. And if you're like, we did one of them, that's great. We're that much further ahead. So, um, okay. So look at calendar and creation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, okay. CC. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. So cool. Um, you know, the more, and then anyway, if it becomes too much too, like Cameron, just speak up this week and be like, Hey, this is actually way too much for us. And either we have to punt it to next week or we need another team's help or whatever. Same for everybody. If it's like too much, just speak up. It's not like a now and forever decision. So it's just a starting point. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, okay. So we'll get this kind of like placeholders outline, you know, start getting this fleshed out. Um, just to say, like, I'm highly motivated to have our STD done on December 15th. It's technically not due till the 19th, but I want it done that Saturday because I'm leaving on Sunday to come out to BYU Idaho to graduate. Hey, <laughs> and, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, um, so I would love it done. And then Brother Wild, when we told him that tonight too, he said, that's great because that actually buys us some time. So if for some reason we like kind of botch it and miss something big, he will give us feedback and let us kind of like, <laughs> you know, fix it up. Yeah. So. I heard a story where uh, maybe he told it to you guys, but Brother Wild was like, yeah, th they made an STD and it was terrible. So a group of students actually came to me and they remade the entire thing. The whole class benefited from those like three or four students doing all that work. But oh, really? I don't think we'll have to go that far because we're doing pretty good. But he definitely did say if we needed to at the very last week, we could rechange everything. Yeah. But we shouldn't. I don't think we're that far far off <laughs> no i think we're pretty good and i think i feel pretty good about it and um and just keep in mind that like we are looking to get a good grade um and to make some build something that makes sense but it doesn't have to be everything we ever wanted and i kind of think we're all on that page um now um so he will try to put it together in his mind so we do need to make and he is a software engineer developer um so he will try to put it together but yeah okay Thank you, everybody, for coming. This All right. Great. Yeah. You're welcome, and congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, we'll speak up if you've got questions or whatever this week. Um, and yeah, what are we doing again? Okay. You can talk to Cameron. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Christina, will you hang around for a minute so I can run yeah. something by? Yep. Sure. Okay. I'm gonna stop this recording, and we will talk to you later.